All right, we are back for round two on the draw. Unfortunately, this one lander, well, I cannot keep it, so it's gonna be a mulligan. That one is fine, though. Uh, definitely don't mind drawing that, especially since I have Essence Flux, so I could, you know, protect it from a removal or something along those lines and make it bigger, which sounds pr sounds pretty good. Tomb Gossip Mongo, well, that could be threatening, I'm not gonna lie. We do have a, a decent curve, and I can trade it with my Qatar, hopefully, so we'll see how it goes, but that card is pretty good. Grief Boon. Alright, my open deck is extremely aggressive, apparently. Um, So, best case scenario, I can steal that before it grows bigger. Um, Alright, alright. Yeah, the fact that they are attacking is probably good news, it means that they are not flipping yet, and if I draw any land, I can steal it before trouble. Shepherd is fine to some extent, not the best draw, but fine. At least Welcome to the Fold should be really solid in, in this matchup. Uh, as my opponent is just gonna block. Alright, fine, I don't really mind that, I mean, I have my own uh, Qatar. And it means that this is not flipping, so that's pretty pretty good for me. And if I can steal that, they will have to... Well, it's 2 damage each turn, which is pretty good. And if they want to get the enchantment back, they will have to kill their own creature. And if I can steal it when they have uh, always watching, that's amazing, because you want creature to play with that. If someone stole your creature, it's really bad for you. So... Sounds like pretty decent news. Alright, I, I, I'm just gonna do that, honestly. I'm not gonna wait any longer. I think that's a pretty solid uh, move for me to make, especially since the opponent is tapped out, so it, it, he or she cannot answer by pumping the creature, make it bigger, or something along those lines. So yeah, that, that sounds like a pretty solid uh, play for me to make, and I have still two decent creatures in my hand, as well as a trick. Um, I guess they can make a spirit of the guitar, and then I can block their own gossip monger. But in, once it's stolen, I can actually flip it uh, mid combat. So there is that. All right, let's beat down. I'm at 13, so I took a decent amount of damage early on. Um, yeah, so white green extremely aggressive. Not sure what else they are trying to do, but at least they are doing that. Uh, always watching is quite is gonna be quite hard to beat. I'm go not gonna lie. Uh, I could have played a captain first, but I think. Do I want to flip that? Actually, I could. I could definitely see myself trying to flip that and make it bigger. It would grow grow into um, uh, a three three flyer. That can fire brass and that can attack through a dauntless guitar token. Sounds quite solid. Um, I f yeah, I think I will flip that. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. I lose two damage here, but I think making that bigger is is good. All right, let's cast the shepherd and pass the turn, I guess. And if my opponent wants to pass the turn and use a removal and uh well if they if they pass the the turn they probably have a removal but I could I can use essence flux to make sure this doesn't flip so um yeah I could do that I guess uh well first thing first let's uh flip that thing so that logger is going to flip how much do I care about that it's going to be a 5 3 vigilance trample Because I could use the Essence Flex just to make the Shepherd bigger and to make this not flipping and make my open turn not really useful. I think I'm willing to do that and it's a pretty aggro play but I think they are missing land drop and I think it's actually fine to do that. Uh, yeah. Now the question is my open might just trade the, the guitar for the I mean 
the um, yeah the logger for my Qatar. So do I want to pump that or do I want to? I guess I can just play my land and see what happens. I mean, it gives my opponent uh, some information, I guess, but it's fine. Uh, that being said, I've I'm winning the tempo race here, so uh, sounds pretty good. Yeah, the that that that's why uh welcome to the fold is so strong. Like mind control are crazy and limited, and since my opponent did that, I think that I will just. Or put a spirit onto the battlefield instead of pumping the their gossip monger, I guess. All right, yeah, let's do that. And my opponent is left with three mana facing facing uh, I guess potentially ten power of flyer actually. So they need to drop a flyer and a blocker for that. They need a lot of things. Like, yeah, this will not do it. I, I just have 10 power of uh, flying attacking power, so this this is just game over, unless I'm missing something. This should be good. 6, 7, yeah. Yeah, that was 10. Alright, perfect. Well, that Welcome to the Fold was insanely good. Um, so, we are playing against another rather aggressive white drafter. Maybe I want to make the sideboard change I was talking about during the um, the the draft. Uh, I f do think that <coughs> sorry, Silent Observer is a pretty solid answer to Grief Boon. I mean the the white enchantment that they use because you can block their creature most of the time. Um. What do I want to do? I want to change things actually. I think I want to cut the captain, which I think is probably slightly better on the play, but might be dangerous on the draw. The guys are great on the draw. They give you back a bit of tempo. I mean, I have enough spirit to 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 make this enabled basically. Um, I guess essence flux lose value when they know about the card. And it's pro it's pretty good, I think, against a uh, deck with a bunch of removal. Probably not that great in a in a race mirror. So I think I will just side those two creatures in, which are more defensive. Do I want Silver Strike? Dealing with my opponent's creatures seems like a good option when they are uh, playing the um, the enchantment that boosts all creatures. I mean, non-token creatures. Um. What would I cut though? I need to cut a 4-drop, I don't think I can cut anything else, and I'm not, I'm not sure there's any 4-drop that I want uh, that I actually want to cut. I mean, Observer is good against Grief Boon, but not so great otherwise. I think I'll go with a Silver Strike and Explorer. Uh, there are definitely different sideboard options av available there, so... Available, I guess. Uh, sorry for my English, uh, and I'm not entire, entirely sure that the choice I, I I just made is the the perfect one. I think it's fine, but there are probably better things. That hand is great. I have turn one, turn two. Uh, I'm missing land. I, I do need some land drop, but I, I could get them off the, the clue, and I'm drawing quite a bunch of cards before I need to hit my second land drop. Sensor is great with Inspector, as I mentioned during the draft. And well, I already had the harvest hand, so this was kind of enabled. But sensor, sensor, sensor is is pretty good here. Um, yeah, my opponent is just gonna blow up the vessel there. The question now is, should I play the sensor or should I just play just the wind? I, I mean, uh, uh, my clue. To make sure I hit my land drop, I think it's better to hit my land drop, and I'd rather use that later on when I already have a few creatures onto the battlefield. So I think I'll blow up my clue. It m makes it more likely that I can hit my third land drop. So I guess they'll will take a provis dinner, I would assume. And uh, yup, so they have a provisioner in hand. 
All right, all right. Harvest hand, all right. So this is the... Um, I have the white blue human spirit deck and they have the white green human deck. Uh, ooh, that's pretty bad. All right, that's starting to be pretty bad. Um, I think my hand was definitely a keep. Uh, just by the fact that I had two lands on the draw with a one drop, a clue, and uh, stuff like that, but it might just, I might just get destroyed here, honestly, unfortunately. Especially since always watching is quite strong. I don't really know how I'm, how I'm beating that. Especially if I miss my land drop. Good lord. Does it work with the Harvest Hand? I have no idea. No, I don't think so. If it dies and come back return, it should not work. Pretty unlucky though, because I've been drawing uh, five cards uh, <laughs> since my, uh, my opening hand and I haven't drawn any land. Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I think the best play is to equip that. It's I, I will have to discard, but um, Moorland Rifter does not nothing good to my board. Here, if I trade well, they will get the Harvest Hand back, but uh, not too much I can do about that. And I guess at this point, I'm probably discarding my 5-drop. Uh, that might seem a bit clunky, but... Um, just, yeah, at least by doing that, I'm doing something like, it, yeah, I'm not sure how right it is. Either way, I'm really in trouble, but it's, it's mostly because I missed so many land drop more than anything else. Uh, and a Qatar, yeah, if my opponent just plays that against my weak draw each game, it's going to be pretty impossible to win. All right, at least I have a blocker for one of these two creatures next turn. Now, if I miss my next land drop, I think I straight up lose, unfortunately. I don't think I can come... I mean, I'm already, like, super far far behind. But one more missed land drop is going to be the, the end of the world for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes it happens. Pretty unfortunate, though, because two land on draw with uh, a clue that you can sacrifice on turn two doesn't seem that risky in a 17 land deck that's mostly playing monocolor so whatever either way my opponent is not here they did yeah i don't know not sure what they are doing um at this point yeah i definitely need land if i do a land well i have just a win that could buy me some tempo at some point uh, I think if I draw land, I'm just gonna play my own Harvest Hand. Sounds like the better play. It's a chump blocker. Um, yeah, if I eat some lands, uh, if I eat lands during my net next two or three draw step, given the just the win and missionaries, I might be able to come back in this game. Not sure what my opponent is doing. Uh, do or oh, they they send the. Uh, priority back as I just missed another land drop. I'm gonna cast the fox now because it has a bit more power so it's better uh, <coughs> better thing to trade but oh my god that's two lands out of out of the 15 car top card of my deck yeah <laughs> that's quite crazy and pretty bad Ugh, crap I'm getting destroyed I think I have to double block here. Not the best. Doesn't sound like the best thing to do, but don't think I can afford to take six. And uh, either way, I don't think there's a way out of this game. If I had e if I had hit my land drop last turn, I could maybe have done something. But here it's too late. And always watching is already unbeatable. But when you are uh, not doing anything and missing land drop, it's quite brutal. I don't think I want to reveal just a win to my opponent. Um, I think it's my best play though. There's still a very slim chance that I can come back in this game. 
because let's say I bounce that during their turn, I take four from the cavalier, then I play missionaries and they don't play, they will just recast the harvest hand. No, I will not reveal my just the win. There, there is no way. Uh, like even if they have nothing in hand, <coughs> I cannot come back in this game tempo wise. Uh, just awful, just awful. All right, so I think I will come back to something a bit more aggressive since I'm I will be on the play here. And uh, I will. St Still keep Silver Strike. It feels pretty decent in this, in this matchup. Pretty good against always watching. So, ah, uh, yep. And hopefully we can just play more things, <laughs> or at least hit more land drop. Because I was, you know, since I had a decent amount of two drop, I was not even not doing anything. I was playing things, but I needed more mana. All right. Well, there is the mana. There is a two. Yeah, that that hand is perfect. Perfect, and welcome to the fold. I think it's just incredibly great in this matchup. So I love it. I love it. I just I will have to read the um, the scarecrow that come that comes back into a fight because I'm not sure. I, I would have to to read it. I'm not sure if I steal it and it dies, if it comes back uh, for me or for my opponent. Uh, most of the time this kind of effect end up coming back for your opponent but here it might it's a flip card so it might be worded otherwise i'm not sure uh if they play it i, I might just have to check that out uh but again my opponent might be i don't know double queuing or preparing some coffee i don't really know hopefully it will not last too long uh because it's nah, not so funny to play against someone who who takes uh <laughs> A thousand of time in between each. Uh, I mean, not thousand, but it takes a lot of time between each uh, each turn. And you might have noticed that my opponent played a turn one each game so far. <laughs> so their their draw are pretty good. Hopefully, they will not play always watching because I don't I don't think they have two of these in their deck, and it's just so good in this matchup. It could be just nice if they don't top deck it this time. That'd be great. Captain is pretty solid. Can cast it. Uh, it sounds to go pretty well with my curve, so I definitely don't mind that. If they play a creature and flip the the, the gossip monger, I will not be able to steal it. Um, and I cannot attack there because they can just uh, block and flip afterward, and it's gonna be pretty bad for me. So I guess I'll just play a shepherd and pass the turn. Yeah, my opponent draws have been really, really good. And I would assume that they will play a planes and always watching there, following their amazing... <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, the amazing stuff they did so far. I don't think double... I could double block, but it's extremely risky. Like, if they have a plus two, plus two trick, I just get destroyed, so... <coughs> I will not do that. Alright, so... Hopefully we can welcome someone to our fold, if that means something. Like a Dauntless Qatar. Yeah, I don't mind stealing that. Uh, and I... F yeah, I think I'll just do that. J I'll just do that and attack with my two spirits. Uh, if we trade there, uh, I'm fine. If we don't trade, I'm fine too. Uh, either way, I... F I think this is a fine. This is fine for me. And I, I might just block the the rabble dude next turn with their Qatar. Or I could just try to play more aggressively. They have to attack. I think I will take the damage for now. I'm. I think I can win this game uh, by being the aggressor. Um, Apothecary Geist is pretty solid. I think my best play is Captain and attack with my two creatures. If they want to block the Qatar, I'm really happy with that. I think it's a, a great trade for me. If they don't, they take seven, which is quite a lot. And next turn, all right, I'm de I'm definitely glad making this trade. And next turn, they I will block the the rebel dude, and they will have to pump it if they want to trade. So that that will constrain my opponent mana. Uh, 
this turn, which I think is is valuable. Um, and at some point, getting rid of that thing is good. Okay, so they add a uh, strength of arm. Fine, fine, fine. I'd rather them use that here than later on. It's definitely fine with me. They got a spirit, which is also fine. Just the win is pretty good at uh, beating that. Uh, at this point, I think my best choice is just to attack with this shepherd. Play an apothecary geist. How far am I from delirium? So I have an instant, so I'm yeah. But putting uh, enchantment lens or yeah, <laughs> having delirium in, in my deck in general is pretty hard. Um, yeah, I think the best play is is geist. I guess I could play the missionaries and block that again. But actually, I don't mind. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just really easily racing my opponent there. I will go back to uh, 19 there. I guess they could have the instant speed uh, sacrifice a creature with uh, with flying, but they didn't. So I will go back to 19. I take 2 for the rebel monger dude. I'm attacking for 4 with my flyers. Next turn I can moorland restorer and keep just the win available. Sounds pretty good to me. And their spirit is not doing much against my two power and, you know, uh, yeah, my two power spirit. Alright, well, Reaper of Flight Moon Silver is pretty annoying. Do they have Delirium? Not quite. Um, Alright, so I could do a, quite a good amount of different things there. And I don't really know which one is better. Hmm. I think that I should just play the Drifter and keep uh, Just the Win and Spectral Shepherd ability available. I think this is the best choice for me. My opponent is left with one card in hand, so. I think I'm in a very decent spot here. Um, I'm winning the the race. I will have to deal with the Goth, the the rebel thing at some point because I cannot really attack through the Reaper and I don't have any removal. I guess I could try to set up Harvest Hand dying and then equipping it onto the missionaries. Uh, but I think playing Drifter use my mana better and is a bit safer. I'd rather keep my uh, Shepherd ability and just the win ability so I don't get blown back by uh, some sort of trick or stuff like that. So I guess this could go up to how much? 5 power? So if I double block my opponent might want to boost all the way. Don't really want to trade any of my cards for that, but I think I'll do this. Like if they pump uh, for six, I can just bounce the the rebel thing, and they lost quite a bit during the turn in terms of tempo. I could, depending on what they do, I could also just bounce my uh, apothecary guys back back to my hand. Alright, I pass the priority back. Sure. Alright, I'll trade my guys for that thing. It's slightly annoying because it could have been a nice synergy with that later on the game to just gain life, but I I think I'm fine making that trade, honestly. Devil Torn Fox. I think I will actually, again, play that. This way I can keep uh, just the wind and... Hmm. Let's think about that. Maybe it's the turn where I want to play Harvest Hand because I'm not very likely to make any block or anything next turn. So maybe I can just do that so I can set up the Avacyn Missionaries for later on. My opponent might have the 4 3 Wolf at instant speed, but they did not have. Uh, that would have been pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie, and pretty annoying. So I'm quite glad that they did not play that. At this point we have a slight card advantage, I guess, given that we draw less land. Not sure what the opponent has in hand. 
If they do nothing, it's probably a good news for us most of the time. They seem to be uh, slightly flooded, I guess. Alright, island is pretty good. So do I want to flip that? I mean, do I really want to flip that and uh, put that into my graveyard, even though attacking into a 3-3 is pretty bad? Should I attack with the hand? Do I really want that as a uh, an equipment? I mean, it's not the fact that it's not doing anything as a two two currently against my open board means that I think I'm fine. Even though it might sound weird or pretty mediocre play, I don't really like doing that. I like to get value out out of my cards, but my open might just take the damage, thinking that I need the equipment, which is the case. And if they block, I think I'm happy to. All right, they did block. Sure. Now the question is, so this triggers at the end of the turn, so do I want to wait till I have 6 mana and I can do both and I'm sure I'm removing something at least for one turn? Hmm. I think I actually, uh, I'm actually fine playing the fox, equipping the the sight onto the the drifter and set up an attack for next turn. Yeah, sounds fine to me. My opponent did not have anything end of turn. Vessel, so I guess they are a bit heavy on land and they are trying to find relevant things. Uh, Cult of the Waxing Moon is definitely a relevant card. I guess they will pick up that. I guess they do have Delirium, so Paranoid Perish Blade sounds pretty strong, to be honest. Uh, and they did take that, alright. Yeah. Sounds like a reasonable option to me. Mm, and they start attacking. Interesting. Not sure that you wanna... Yeah, I guess it's fine. That's uh, that's uh, That's a decent choice. Yeah, I guess I could move the equipment and maybe they don't want to trade the angel. But they can they, they they do have delirium, so they could sacrifice things to the angel, which could be threatening. I guess just a win kinda deals with that to some extent, but that could be threatening. And I'm still pretty far from having delirium. I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with that uh, perish blade. I could just use my missionaries on it, but I'd rather remove the angel, I think. And if I... yeah, I think I'd rather remove the angel. Well, purge is slightly clunky, but pretty good. Uh, I guess I will sacrifice an island, it, and at some point I, maybe I will play that without, without having 6 land, it's fine. Um, yeah. All right, that was a, a a solid top deck. Definitely, I'm definitely drawing pretty well. Um, not many, uh, <coughs> not many uh, lands, and uh, you know, just a perfect amount of land. So I could have uh, put the scourge thing onto the wolf, onto the fox. But I guess I don't mind tra trading my fox for a spirit, do I? On the other hand, I really want to keep this ability and uh, just the win available. Do I want to make this trade here? Since my opponent does have Delirium, I think it's worth doing. Because at any point they can sacrifice the spirit to the Reaper and block something bigger. So I might as well do that, I think. Alright. Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean... I don't know. I guess both play of their uh, advantage and disadvantage. So they top decked an equipment which is not doing much here. I mean, no, actually it's doing stuff because it means I cannot uh, attack next turn unless they attack, but I don't think so. I don't think they will attack. If they attack, I'm just going to take the damage and wait till the end of turn. If they don't attack and pass the turn, I will bounce that end of turn and then play my missionaries during my turn. 
uh, swing in for s like five, and then I can equip it next turn and flip it and get rid of the Reaper and probably win the game the turn after that. So I think unfortunately for them, they might just have two lands in hand, or maybe not, I don't really know. Not attacking, I think, is a good news for me. Definitely want to bounce that end of turn. Um, so I can I have clear cost to attack with my uh, things. True face sensor is not bad at all. It's fine. I mean, if my opponent does have some removal for my creature, it's gonna turn out quite clunky. But I I think it's fine. But they they seem to be flooded or something like that because. Uh, I would have, I mean, they would have uh, opposed more resistance had they drawn uh, five land and only spell like I did, which is, I guess, uh, pretty lucky. Uh, <coughs> pretty lucky. All right, so hopefully the missionaries will be enough to close this game. Um, so next turn they can play the Reaper, equip it, or play the Reaper and a two drop. I guess play the Reaper and a three drop. Um, but they are at three. They are actually dead on the board. Like, if they tap out, they are dead. I will just attack for lethal. Especially with the true face sensor, that makes my my last creature three power, and means that uh, yeah, even if they just play a three drop there, I can equip the sensor and kill them. And I think they will do that. Ooh, a purge. Well, that actually that's actually the same result as uh, if as uh, as if <coughs> as um, if they had played a creature. Sorry, th this was kind of clunky what I just said, but either way we are winning because I don't think there's any card that can save my opponent for zero there. All right, sweet. So I think game one was pretty interesting. Game two, I did not match, and this this game I opened went kind of flooded, which is pretty annoying for them. Uh, either way, Welcome to the Fold was amazing, I think, so that's that's the good news. I haven't had the chance to play it. I've played against it, but I haven't had the chance to play it, and it was really good, so that's nice. Um, yup, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe, and I see you guys uh, for the finals. Thank you for watching.